Good evening, everyone. This is Ryan Miller participating in a multi-broadcast. So I am the founder of Parent Dome, where I speak about keeping kids safe in a digitally immersed life. I am broadcasting live on Nissan Communications, so you can get that live and watch it in your living room on a big screen. You can get it on Roku, big screen entertainment of listening to me. Also, I'm going live on Periscope, and I also am live on Blab. So welcome to everybody tonight. Uh, first, a little bit of housekeeping for my general audience. I do have rules and code of conduct for my live stream broadcasts. Because when we are doing live stream, it is age appropriate software that is being used and there is terms of service associated with these platforms. In Blab and in Periscope, it is available to be downloaded by minor children, 13 years of age. Also, many younger children use the platform, particularly in my messaging. I do have young kids that come and participate. I'm going to share a story about that in a little bit. So I just want to draw people's attention on Periscope. If they were to click the little Perry guy down in the corner, it opens up my profile. And in there is a, a link that describes what my terms of service are. So if you have any question as to how I manage the code of ethic and the communication, that's available for you to, to watch. Also on Blab, I will maintain the same rules and I will help me in enforcing those. This is a bit.ly link that you can download and watch a video of me describing the terms of service, the code of ethic, and how I handle that. And if people do warrant a behavior that has me execute the function of block, those lives are not dismissed. I deal with them in the manner in which I describe in my terms of service, and it is referred to as block lives matter. Also, because of my participation on live stream in dealing with minors, there are many children that are in various degrees of pain. Now, these children may or may not have the capability to reach out to their parents, to a teacher, to a neighbor, to a counselor. For those children that do enter my broadcast that are in that level of concern, they need somebody to talk to, just go to this link. It's a free PDF download, and it is a list of toll-free numbers. This is available to you. You can pick up the phone. You can listen, look, take a look at which category best identifies where you are, pick up and talk to a real person and get the help that you need. These social media platforms are not very good for conversing. They're very public and it's not very therapeutic and getting on a toll free line, you can get the assistance you need. So that is my general housekeeping. Um, I do speak about keeping kids safe in this digitally immersed life. I talk about awareness, oversight and controls. I approach the topic from non-judgment, and that, that's a very important thing for me to say from the very beginning, because people will draw conclusions that I am sounding judgmental, but I am not. So people are beginning to recognize that there is some um, weird anomaly that has happened with my face. And it's important that I kind of illustrate why I look the way I do. Because of my Periscope participation and I broadcast daily on that platform, I have relationships with those that are that view me routinely, that go into my broadcasts. There are other broadcasts that I go and enjoy and I refer people to. 
And there's a couple of broadcasts which my Periscope audience know that I very much enjoy. And these are a couple of um, broadcasters which use puppets. There's one which is called Puppet Kevin that all you see is, is Puppet Kevin and he interacts with his Periscope audience. My interaction with Puppet Kevin has been beautiful and I've let him know that he is reaching an audience that he is not aware of and that is those children in the special needs community. I have brought a portion of a group that I that is close to my heart and this is the special needs community. Some of them are nonverbal, some of them are really um, on the autism spectrum and they sit with their parents and they watch puppet Kevin do his thing. And the feedback that I have gotten from those parents defies my ability to alert and make Kevin, puppet Kevin aware. He is touching people's lives in a way that he has no feedback on. Then the other one is Ali 1030. Alicia, which is Ali, Eloise, and Leopold. It's a family. It's a dolphin, a mom, and a lion. And they also do a family puppet show. And there has been some interaction and dialogue and things going back and forth between Eloise, Leopold, and Ali, and myself. And there's like been a little bit of banter going back and forth. And they do something in their broadcast. I do something in my broadcast. And it's very fun. It's very entertaining. And Ali has that same community watching her. She's not aware of to the degree in which this community is watching her. But these same children are participating in that broadcast. And those children's lives are being touched. Those children are in my broadcast as well because the parents are listening to me as I'm, I'm bringing these, these things together. Also have the Downs community in there as well. The, the, I call them the, the 24th chromosome champions. And these are groups of people that have a special place in my heart, but that does not negate the heart that I have for the general community. Children, keeping them safe in this digitally immersed life. My message is to parents that are the custodians, the caregivers of all children. But my message is getting out further than that. My message is getting out to even mature adults that are interacting with their children and their grandchildren. And they're recognizing some of the dangerous risks, threats, and permanence of what's happening in the internet. And they're reaching into me as well. So going back, the reason I shaved my beard is in participating with Ali and Eloise and Leopold we went back and forth with a little di diatribe. And Leopold had challenged me to, one moment for me there, challenged me that he, he put on a construction paper beard and mustache on a puppet. And he went off screen, you heard something that sounded like a wood chipper and he comes back on and he is, thank you Trey, and his beard is gone. And so he challenged me to shave my beard. So I started my broadcast this morning and I was jacket with a scarf around my face, shivering. My early morning broadcast, the heat hadn't been kicked off and I was pretending that I was shivering. And then I did my intro and then I made the announcement to, I accepted Leopold's challenge. And this was a truce, that there was a misperception of some things, but I was going along with the, the play between Eloise, Ali, and Leopold, and I, they pulled down my scarf and I'm shaved. Now the feedback that I got from Ali, Eloise, and Leopold through direct messaging and, and through my broadcast was loving and laughter. And what it did for their daughter, I, you can't even describe the humor I must have provided for her. But you know what, I mean, me losing facial hair for the joy that it can bring for a family is, is priceless. There's, there's no price on that. And what that did, oh, very good. Thanks thanks for coming in, Trey. I appreciate it. Have, a, have an awesome night. Thanks for, for coming in. I really do. Um, and, and one of my, my regulars, uh, Trey, was in, and, and he was making comments as to my appearance looks more professional. So um, I, my beard is for the winter months that I need to keep warm while I'm out moving the snow and things. But it, it's time for it to go. And it's a seasonal thing. Um, so... Part of me is not just talking the talk that people listen to, it is walking the walk. And my, as, as Amnon knows, my website is a work in progress. It is never finished. You never hit the goal line with the website. 
And I've offered a, a, an area for people to provide feedback because I say integrity is what I do, my walk, my journey, but my re reputation is not what I say about myself. My reputation is what other people say about me. So my integrity, I walk and I'm held accountable to that standard that I live by to live that life of integrity. But my reputation is discerned based upon those lives that I interact with and the feedback that they provide. So I opened up and I said, here's a way for you people that are communicating with me and saying these things that you want to say. It's great for me to hear it in the private domain, but I think it's great for the public to hear it as well. Even the stuff that is challenging and the painful things that are happening. If you're willing to share it with me, I will ask, are you willing to share it with the public? You can do it anonymously, but the journey is a beautiful journey. Even through the pain comes a blessing. And people are starting to put that in there, and, it, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, so I want to point out that, first of all, if you do have questions about what I talk about keeping kids safe on the Internet and or adults safe on the Internet, about awareness, oversight, and controls, I welcome you to participate in the conversation. In Periscope, they, they uh, type the questions in, and there's dialogue that I interact with my Periscope audience. On Nissan Communications, you can call in at 919-518-9773 or come in via Skype at Computers 2K Voice. Also, for the Blab audience, if you have a question that you would like to ask, please type it into the chat roll. You can use the hash, the slash mark, followed by the Q. Type in your question. It will pop off to the side. Amnon sitting over there watching that, and he will reflect, relay those questions to me or put you on a seat to have a dialogue with me. So, got multiple forms of communication that can happen. Also, when I make reference to my educational platform, it is at parentdome.com. This is an educational platform. It is an ever-expanding educational platform. Uh, this morning, I had gone through some more of my research and studying it and I just upload, uploaded another 10 pieces of research documentation that's all supportive of the curriculum that I provide inside of, of Parent Dome. So it is a wealth of information and resource. Uh, I may have communicated last week that that is going through a relaunch, that I've had a limited time offer up on that site, and that is about to expire, and I'm relaunching with the new new platform that's going to have a lot more content in it, so it will be changing. I had hoped to have it done by the end of January, but that's that doesn't happen. I'm, I can't. I don't want to put a timeline on it, but it will be shutting down, and a new new model will be coming forward. Uh, so tonight, I want to talk about reaching into the community <clears throat> because of my participation on Blab and on Periscope and with, with Nissan, that there has been another community that has been reaching to me as a resource. And I was speaking earlier that um, I, I participated on Blab as a way to introduce someone that was, I like to call the fine wine people, the, the mature people that are not aware of necessarily all the dangerous risks and threats of what are happening on the internet, but they want to take advantage of some of these platforms, but they want to do it in a safe way. So they're not ready to, to jump into the icy cold water and experience it, but they want to be gently navigated into the experience. So I took a woman that's been following me and is part of my family at Parent Dome and introduced her to the Blab platform. And, showed her how that experience works and she's preparing to get a new computer and she wants to make sure that she is secure with that experience and i this i'm re referring to her as one of but that is one of many because my audience is is very diverse remember i say i have multiple family dynamics that exist in my audience whoever the caregiver is it could be grandparents it could be aunts and uncles it could be blended families broken families single parent families various age group children, there is no one template for who my audience is. And when I say the parent dome, it doesn't necessarily, the parent can also be the grandparent. They are in the custodial hierarchy of the relationship with the child. So this whole mechanism of education, even though I, my goal is to ensure the safety of the next generation of children coming out that it doesn't negatively impact the next generation. There is a value to anybody in that relationship about the security and the protection 
and how to stop these certain things, and then the fix side of the equation. And I haven't talked about the fix. That is part of my curriculum is the fixing of the viruses and the malware and the blue screen of death and, and those kind of things. So this, this woman was a catalyst, and then I started having a, a larger quantity of mature adults. Now, my, from my own vantage point, my father, who is in his 70s, whenever he has a technology issue, who's the first person he's going to call? Me. And I think that's a logical thing that is happening in family dynamics, that grandparents are calling their children to help them through the technology issues that they may be having or asking them questions about this next technology investment, thinking that their children are closer to the situation to provide some insight into it. But then there's another issue is that what is the relationship between the child and the parent to weather that conversation and to have the level of patience that may be needed to have that conversation. And I know for myself in dealing with my father and some of the things that he does and the buttons that he clicks, and I have to have a tremendous amount of patience as I walk him through how to fix the problem and how to, how to do certain things. Well, there's this community out there that wants access to some of the, the values that I talk about in the safety and the security and the privacy, which is outside the domain of their children's support. So they're saying, Ryan, can you help us in that? And I'm like, absolutely. I'm providing a pathway that these people will have access to a calendar that they can schedule time and, and have a conversation with me as needed. And I've built resources, other people that are skilled to help in that domain because that number is growing. <laughs> it, it, I responded to it and then people are like raising their hand. I want that. I need that. I'm like, okay, I hear you. Let me provide it. So those tools are expanding as we speak. I had a thought. I just forgot where I was going with it. Um, I don't know. So that community, oh, there's where I was going. So that community also had another request. And they said, is there a way that you can come to our community center and talk about these things to our community? Somebody asked me flat out in an email, have you gone to senior citizen and or community centers and done presentations like this? And just for my general audience, let me give you a snapshot of the different types of environments I have stood before. You know I've stood before students in an elementary, middle, and high school. I've been before college students, been at, at university with fraternities and sororities and larger groups within the university setting, been in a classroom setting at a university, been in a classroom setting within a school. I've been through various sporting groups, some sporting groups I've been to, let's say a gymnastics club, a, a local gymnastics, a local karate, um, I've done distant, I've done remote teaching, meaning I've traveled to destinations of a larger sporting groups. I've also done presentations that have been via the web in different sporting, um, to coaches, to coaches and students, coaches, students, and parents, and just parents in various different sporting events, football, soccer, basketball, hockey, swimming, I mean, all different types of clubs where you have a, a location of children that could be, that are digitally connected. And there's no group of children that you don't have that are connected to the internet. They're, they're everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's, there isn't a child walking around without some access to the internet. Becca, good to see you. Thanks for joining. And thanks for your emails, by the way. Um, so talking about reaching into the community, I've done those, those domains. I have done what are called meetups where I have go to a local coffee house or go to a lo local conference room, go to a local uh, auditorium where you have anywhere. So, so let's say the Chamber of Commerce, which is a very well-known uh, nationwide organization. I will go into local chambers and I will do a presentation before a Chamber of Commerce, which is local business professionals. And it will not work that way. Oh, hi, Danny. Good evening to you. Thanks for joining us tonight. So 
I've, the, the diversity of type of groups, I've done Kohanas, I've done the Rotarians, I've done Girl Scouts, I've done Boy Scouts, all these different types of groups. Most of them, <clears throat> I should say, let me rephrase that, around 40% of them have been face-to-face, -face, that I've gotten in my car or taken a train and I've gone to these and arrived at the destination and to do my presentation. That is audience-specific. I have been to senior senior citizen centers. I've been to um, assisted living centers. I've been to VAs. So it, it's I'm, I'm willing to go anywhere where this is a particular issue when people are connected to the internet. Good evening, Lori. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. But the question was, have I gone to remote community centers? I know you have to. Somebody's asking what happened to my beard. You have to go to this morning's broadcast to see what happened, this morning broadcast on Periscope to hear what happened to the beard. Um, so the, how do I get into the local community centers? So I do have people which I, I re effectively refer to as passion partners. These are people that have a similar passion as I do they have a similar vision to keeping kids safe on the internet. They have an alignment of my mission, which is in the domain of keeping children safe based upon the three topics, awareness, oversight, and control. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. I will go, I will go watch Allie's broadcast after I'm done tonight. Um, Allie, Allie was, Allie is um, Eloise, Allie, and Leopold, and they just did a broadcast right now, and I just missed it. So that's that's a shame for me, but I will go catch it on replay because I'm sure it's very funny. Andrew Page is back. Greetings to you, Andrew. And Nader, good to see you as well. Thanks for joining in tonight. So I have people which are called passion partners. There's not a lot of them, but they're geographically located around the country that they are using their words in casting my message to various audiences. I talked to my parents this past Wednesday when I was in Florida, and one topic was internet safety. Yes, another person no noticed I shaved. To get the story, you have to go to this morning's broadcast, watch the replay, and you'll see why I shaved. Good evening, Kathy. So, the the um, so they're in various parts of the country, and they are meeting in certain groups that they are comfortable in. They are using their words to communicate my message. And that, yes, I do. Kathy, I'm doing three broadcasts at the same time. I'm doing Periscope. I have a computer over here, which is live streaming at Nissan Communications, which is on the TV. And I also have Blab running in the background. So I'm bouncing back and forth between monitors talking to people. So if those did want to participate in the conversation beyond, sing or not the song, Carolyn, good to see you. Want to participate? You can go watch this on the large screen at your home if you have a Chromecast or for Roku at NissanCommunications.com. You can also call in if you're watching there at 919-518-9773, or you can come in via Skype at Computers 2K Voice. And if the Periscope audience wants a more interactive uh, option, they can jump over to blab.im. They can see what's happening there as well, and you can type, and you can possibly take a seat and ask questions. Yes, you can watch what happened this morning on the replay, this my, my morning broadcast replay. So these people are using their voice in their environments that they have relationships with. I have uh, women that are in mom's clubs or book clubs. It's a topic they wanted to learn more about and for their kids to learn more about internet safety. My gosh, Lori, you're right on topic here because I'm, I am, I will catch Eloise's scope, Carolyn. Um, I'm talking about the adults. <laughs> Very good, I will look, listen to Leo's message that there's an, a community that wants the additional value that I have and I'm saying these passion partners are out in various communities. Like I mentioned, the mom's club or the book club, um, the women that go out and do the painting thing, those kind of groups, they talk about it and they build a bridge for me. They do the introduction and they say, talk about the nuggets I talk about. They talk, they talk about the higher level and they say, you, want, you may want to tune into Ryan. So they have the option to watch me on Periscope. They have the option to watch me here at Nissan Communications or on Blab or they can have a private conversation with me. So webinars are, are what many people do, but I don't, 
I'm not a big proponent of webinars because I like a dynamic conversation. So I use other video based platforms to have one too many people participate, such as appear.in or zoom.us. And that gives me the ability for people that may be sitting in a community center for them to participate in a video based conversation that I can see them and they can see me and we can interact verbally or we can interact through chat. So these passion partners are out doing that and there are more people that want to be in that role because they have, they have got a deeper insight to me over time. They've had the ability to go through my broadcast and I have 600 of them and they've got some depth of experience as to who is this guy, what value does he bring, what, what is the value of his content and they're recognizing it's no joke. And that there are certain people that are coming into my broadcast on various platforms and say, you've got something different. And I do have something different. And remember I said early on when I approach this topic, it is non-judgmental. I believe my audience that is following me now believes the sincerity of those words. Because I, and I'm, I constantly put more words around it. But when I talk about this non-judgmental, I say, parents, I'm glad, I'm happy to what you have done thus far because you have done what you've done based upon what you know, where you are right now. And that is great. That is awesome. And when you come to me, I'm going to give you additional awareness and talk about oversight and what kind of Dorian Degano, good Good after good evening. I, you're you're new to me, so I'm I'm not familiar with you. So greetings to you, um, and I don't approach this as judgment. And I share that people when they hear me and the awareness starts getting a little pulled back, and people start hearing the awareness that I'm not judging them. And I do know that people have a tendency to put words in my mouth that are not actually there, and they start feeling a sense that they have not been doing something and that they feel that they are failing for some reason based upon what I have said. That's the exact opposite of what I'm saying. I'm not judging you and I'm saying you're doing a great job where you are right now with what you're doing. Um, let me, I just didn't, I just have to do a quick uh, re-announcement on this. When uh, people come into my broadcast, I'm doing multiple broadcasts right now, and I have three live streams running at the same time. And I operate my broadcast and my messaging in accordance with the terms of service. And I give you the ability that you can click down below, and it opens up my pro profile. No, I didn't. I'm just, I'm just drawing people's attention. I'm not calling out you, Joe. I'm, I'm just letting people know there's new people that have come into the room that if they want to understand how I manage my conversation on this platform, they're free to listen to the terms of service. If they violate those terms of service because this is an age appropriate, uh, minors do come into this, I ask that you be respectful, ask that you be in support of asking questions related to my topic that I am talking about. But if you are disruptive or you are off topic and you are asking me to do things outside of these terms, I, I will remove that from the broadcast. So that's, that's, I'm just, it's better to know what the expectations are when you come in here as opposed to be, be surprised when something happens. Joe is Andrew Page. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know who is who. I mean, there, there's, because the internet is anonymous, uh, I don't know. So, Doria. Yes, I, and that's that's fine. Oh no, there's Andrew Page. Andrew Page is right there. Oh, very good. So there's Dory. So that's there's we go. So that was a very good example. So here I had somebody that came into my live stream that was being inappropriate, and that's that's just me. I have to execute the block. That person is a disruptor, and he will be handled according to my block. Block lives matter. Um. So when I was talking about what people feel, what people feel, they take this feeling that they are not doing 
a, um, they feel like they're failing based upon words that I say. And again, I take this off that it's non-judgment. That it is the non-judgment. I'm sorry, I have some things happening off in the, the chat roll here, which I do need to address. So uh, I just want to call attention to Joe. Um, Andrew Page has some credibility with me in my broadcast. I know who he is. I've, I've, so Joe, I'm going to remove you at this time because I know you not at all, and I do know Andrew Page a lot. So, and if you come back, you may come into the broadcast, and I will have to terminate that new person coming into the broadcast. This is part of the disruptive stuff that happens that I have the capability to deal with that young children do not. Young kids, when they're on these platforms, this was mild abuse that I was experiencing on Periscope, but young children on this platform are not as, they don't have the resiliency that I have. Oh, then I will, very good, then I will, I will take care of that. I was just notified that this person was following me on Twitter as well. So this is another person I have to block off of Twitter. It's, it's just um, the mayhem that happens with um, children in pain. These are children in pain. Good evening, Jamie. So now I can think I can get my head screwed on straight now that the, the pe parents feel that based upon when I start going through this awareness and op opening blinders, that they feel that they have not done something. They're failing as a parent. Those are not my words, but that's the feeling that overcomes them because they have an internal critic that is evaluating what I'm saying. And they're like, well, I don't do this. I don't do that. And I'm saying, stop that. Stop it. That internal critic doesn't belong in this conversation. Because this conversation, I am speaking life, love, and hope into your children and into you. And I'm not judging you. I'm saying you've done a great job with what you know where you are right now. Great job. But when you come into my broadcast, all of a sudden you learn something you didn't know. You didn't know about that flashlight app. You didn't know webcams were hacked and on and on and on. And I'm saying, take the inner critic and put them off to the side. And I'm not saying take your kid off of the internet. And I'm not saying take away their device. And I'm not saying, I'm saying don't do anything right now other than just listen to me. And then as you attend to my broadcast a couple of times, I stick my hand out across the table, across the screen, I say, here, come on, grab, grab my hand. Let's go for a walk. And I'm going to introduce you here to a platform that there's free information in there that you can learn about some of this stuff to take the blinders even a little bit more. Becca has just said you have opened my eyes to what my kids are doing on the Internet. And, and I don't want to, you to be scared with that. Because when I, when people's eyes start getting opened and they start seeing some things that their kids are doing, there's, an, there's a reaction that happens. And I'm saying the reaction, govern your reaction, approach it from hope and approach it from love. Love your children. Yes, they do, Lori. Parents do tend to get overwhelmed. But I'm saying pump the brakes, pump them. When you come to me and you hear these things, I'm going to... I'm going to give you tools and resources on what to do, but I'm also going to role play and model for you what the conversation can look like. Because when I give you that boilerplate agreement to start transitioning the relationship, that's not something you're going to cram down your child's throat. It's a family meeting. It's a discussion. It's a conversation. And it begins with the first words, honey, son, daughter, children, I love you. Your mom and dad love you. Your mom loves you. Your dad loves you. Your grandparent, whatever your relationship is with those children, begins from the premise of love. And then when we go into the next level of conversation is that I am not assuming you're doing anything bad. It's not. Because I know the internet is a bi-directional communication. And I'm going to assume that based upon the things that we've taught you and showed you and allowed for you that we think you're making wise choices. We really believe you're your child making wise choices. We do. And we trust that. But there's some other things that are happening on the internet that are really dangerous and we haven't presented them to you to even know about. So what we want to do is just to take a step. That we don't want to take anything away from you. We don't want to 
shut, shut down your freedom, but we want to provide you safety with what you do and where you go and what is said and what you say. And we take step one and that we have a discussion that builds a bridge to a conversation that, that, should, that we can start to wrestle back control of the device. If we have lost control of that device, we start to get back control of it. That's our first objective. That that get over that hurdle in love because it is our device. It is our legal responsibility. It is our financial responsibility. But to get back that, I'm sorry, I have to check this real quick. Uh, it's unfortunate. Sorry. It's unfortunate when I have, um, I'm sorry, I'm being distracted because I have a, another person. Remember I said they go out and they, they get blocked, they go out and create another profile and then they come back in. That's what I have happening at this, this moment. So I have to interrupt myself to, to take care of this person that is going to be disruptive yet again. Uh, but that, that's okay, because remember, the way I deal with that in accordance with my terms of service is I pull away their anonymity. Uh, Joe, that doesn't, that doesn't cut that buddy. Um, that they, that they do things and uh, during my broadcast, I don't have power other than the block. But once the broadcast is complete, I take away their anonymity and I take their true character of who they are in a broadcast and I take it to their sphere of influence and say, I'm, I don't have the ability to change these children that are being disruptive and vulgar and inappropriate. I can't change that. But I can take what they represent to me and put it in front of those people that are next to them in their lives, not their parents. The parents, many parents are saying, not my child. My child's not doing this stuff. So it's inappropriate for me to go to a parent because the parent will say, that, that's, what's your evidence? Well, I got the evidence, but you, you, you really don't want to understand what's happening here. So I deal with these children in love as well. Most of this behavior that's disruptive is happening from, from uh, adolescent boys. Um, very sad. <clears throat> so, um, gosh, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> that's, that happens. Um, oh, so when you're having that relationship with your child, that conversation, I say it comes from love. You want to get that technology back and I help role play that conversation. And what happens at the end of it? That's a great, great, great point. Um, I'm not suggesting that I shouldn't give them so much attention. And that's a difficult thing when I'm dealing with multiple broadcasts because I let me, let me address, address that point for a moment. Um, I don't think I've addressed my certain audiences, the Nissan Communications or the Blab audience as to what is happening during that encounter. Because this is probably for, something foreign for watching this on TV because you don't have this kind of interaction. And in Blab, it doesn't happen nearly like this. But this is a live streaming platform. This is where many, many children are participating today. And what you're seeing is a live, real-time example as to how this broadcaster deals with this. And right now, tonight, the behavior is rather mild. But platforms such as Snapchat, YouNow, Omegle, Periscope, Meerkat, Chat Roulette, the list goes on. Skype, Uvu, Google Hangouts, the list is long. Children are operating on these platforms from nine years old up, up through high school. They're, they are live streaming. Many are broadcasting, Some many are just watching and participating in the broadcast. Very good. So what I am, I am a broadcaster who has a very powerful message. And I am going to draw in people that don't want my message to go out. And they don't want me to hold this disruptive people accountable. So people that are on live streaming, other than myself, children, particularly women, there is going to be an entire flood of 
conversation that comes through. Earth Permit, thanks for joining. I've got a multicast going on tonight, so I'm dealing with a couple of different audiences. Um, a massive deluge of comments. And if you were ever to participate as a grown-up on particularly Periscope and or Meerkat and just be a spectator in somebody's broadcast, you will get a firsthand experience as to how vile of the communication is. Now, I'm a grown adult. And people in my audience know that the words have no power over me. They don't affect me. They just roll off my back and I deal with those in a loving way because I ascribe that this vile, nasty, ugly, mean behavior is a pain. It's an outward manifestation of a pain that they're hiding from. Now, there's a portion of people that do this for attention. But the off offsetting side of that is they're not getting the attention that they desire in other places. They're not getting attention from their friends or from their family. Or they themselves are being verbally assaulted in other social media platforms. And this is a way for them to deflect some of that and then cause some of their own mayhem. I say victims are also victimizers. Now, these statements are not mine. I don't own them. This is the, the, the research that I've done. And this is the feedback coming through the psychologist and psychiatrist and the therapist office that this behavior is not people's true character, but this is, it could be a psychological, it could be a chemical thing, but it is very much an outward manifestation to hide something deeper inside. So I look at this and I say, these people are in trouble, they're in pain. That's what's behind my curtain, all that disruptive behavior that these children are in pain. Now in the, the social media platform, which I, I spend more time in Periscope, People, when they take those, that disruption, they take that young life, they hit the block button, and it's disposed of. It goes into what's called effectively the blocked list. It's a list of people that have violated somebody's space in a broadcast, and they block them, and they throw, throw them away, and they are never thought of, nor cared for, or not a moment's notice, even concerned with that person. I, on the other hand, don't do that. Yes, I do block them. But I know that they are somebody's children. They are probably somebody's children that have been watching me on all of these platforms. They're, they're children of people on Periscope. They're children of people who have tuned into me on Nissan. They're people of, children of people on, on Blab. These are not orphans. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. Sean, who watches me on both, um, appreciated that I shaved. So, yes, thank you. So, I choose that I know that these are not orphan children. These are somebody's children that are being unsupervised, that the parents don't know they're connecting on these platforms. They don't know what their behavior is. And everybody else has taken that life on Periscope and thrown it to the curb. I choose not to do that. I don't do that from a holier than thou kind of thing. I do that because I'm consistent. Because my message is to keep kids safe on the internet. These kids behaving in this way are not safe. Because if they're behaving in my broadcast to that degree, I'm a grown man. I'm talking about how to keep kids safe from the dangers, risks, threats, and permanence of the internet, these are the kids at risk. And I choose not to take those kids at risk and say, yeah, I know you, you don't have any parents because 94% of parents say it's not my kid. But they do have parents. I will do what I can to influence them before they make a permanent decision, before they make a permanent decision in their internet experience that affects their ability to get into college, their career. Yes, Maria. So I at least am consistent with my messaging. And it is absolutely, Amnon pointed out, I do give them more attention than other broadcasters do. And it is disruptive when I'm dealing with multiple platforms. <laughs> You'll get used to it. Don't worry. 
I, I agree. Somebody just commented on, on Periscope, which um, I, I don't get into government and politics too much on, on a public platform, but they said most of these kids are probably being raised in government schools. And I, and I can say that is a true statement. The majority of children are being going through the state-funded educational system, and the state is not equipped to play um, disciplinarian on somebody else's technology. They're not prepared to do that. They, they can't do it. Thank you. So, yes, Earth Permit, you and I are in sync. I, I, I know where you're coming from. I'm in a public forum, and I'm right now, so just people know I'm, I'm talking on Periscope. I am talking on Blab.im, and I'm also broadcasting for big screen viewers at Nissan Communications, which can be picked up on Roku as well. So um, th these, these are issues. And because of my consistency, that, and I also know that there is no ethic or morality for social media. There is none. So I've had to modify my presentations to make it clear that when you're on my broadcast, I am going to determine the ethic and morality of my broadcast. Nobody else, nobody else has an enforcement of ethics and morality. The software companies don't. The um, application providers don't. The internet pathway, the gateway, the, the, the broadband pipeline, they don't. They have the ability to enforce a penalty that if you violate the law, but inside of these platforms, there is no enforcement. So I tell my audience when they come into my broadcast that I will keep them safe because I have minors coming in here. These, these platforms do allow for minors. And I keep it a G-rated room. Then I'm going to speak in a language that is respectful of the minors. My language is not addressing the minors. My, my messaging is addressing the caregivers, but my I need to be respectful in my broadcast for those young children coming in. And uh, somebody said the platform is built. Periscope and Blab, terms of service are 13 years of age. Unfortunately, that requires the parent to authorize that, but that the parents aren't clicking an acceptance I agree button. The kids are doing that. And that unfortunately, many of these platforms even have much younger children, much younger. Greetings, Sean. You're bouncing back and forth from room, so uh, <laughs> good to see you in both. Um, so I, I control that ethic and the morality. So if you did have questions for me and you want to participate, I appreciate my Periscope audience hanging in with me. Uh, on Nissan, you can communicate via phone at 919-518-9773, or you can come in via Skype at Computers 2K Voice, or on Blab, you can take a seat and ask questions in there as well. So, so great. So, um, I wanted to further extend that I was talking earlier about the, what I referred to as the passion partners that are reaching into the local communities to get a different audience. And those are also coffee shop conversations. Ryan. Yes, sir. Um, there's a question on Blab. It says, how about special needs kiddos like mine? Yeah, special needs kiddos um, inside inside of here, inside of parentdome.com, I have information specifically targeting different special needs. So um, for those that are on the autism, autism spectrum, I talk about, I don't know who asked that question, Sean. Um, it, somebody probably that knows you, maybe, uh, Rock Hurch. I don't know that person. I know Charlene, and she has autism, ch autistic mm -hmm. children. Um, but it is a, it's a very good question. So for children with special needs, I, ad I address them as a, a unique subset. But the, the overall lessons apply to children with special needs, but they have special concerns that we need to be aware of. So if we have children with, that are on the spectrum, um, people already know that the game Minecraft is very, very valuable, very powerful game for children on the autism spectrum. Fantastic game. 
However, there's an unintended consequence of getting into addictive behavior when participating in that game. And whether do you, you play in one mode or do you play in cooperative mode or public mode, those are things that I talk about. I talk about the, the learning abilities that are experienced in that game. I introduce other games that are safe for children on the spectrum. And then when we're talking about children, like my, 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 my passion is the 24th chromosome party group, um, the Down syndrome, I, there's value for them as well and certain tools that they should be part, could be evaluated participating in, things that they should be scared away from. Stevie G just said my friend has, my son has Asperger's and loves Minecraft. <clears throat> my gosh, and Asperger's people are, they, they have a natural affinity for technology and games. And I, people may not know or are familiar with Asperger's, but one of the things that's attached to Asperger's is solitary. They, they, they don't uh, interact with community very well. But you know what? I have a, a guy that follows me on Periscope who took his son to a video game competition. They're very, very skilled. They're very good at high twitch experiences, high twitch gaming. Just something, something with their level of focus. It's unbelievable. But he took his son to a video game, and I said, and I know his son has Asperger's, <clears throat> excuse me, and he said, I bet that this is the highlight for your child being in such a community with other, yes, so another person was saying that they have a child with LD and that they're amazing with video games, and it, and it is a very therapeutic experience for them, but this young man took his son who has Asperger's to this video game competition, very well known one. Yes. There, and Jamie is saying for those that are in the, in the special needs community, there needs to be more information. And I don't, I can't disagree with that, but I bring a lot of those resources to bear inside, inside here. That my, my site is now being used by the clinical community for I know, Stevie G, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. Socially awkward, that's what I, I mean. I don't want to use politically correct words. I want to say really what words mean. And socially awkward, they, they have difficult times dealing in social situations. And that, it, it's really funny. Here's a, here's a crazy example. A child with autism or Asperger's, if they're in school and they... I'm going to be crude. Parents with special needs have no clue as to predators online. No, they do not. They do not. So child with as autism or Asperger's in a public school setting, if they were to evacuate gas, they were to pass gas in class, it would not be uncommon for them to say audibly, excuse me. Now that would be seemed awkward. And people would call attention, and every time they do it, they would say, excuse me, because they, they believe that is the correct thing to say. And it is. If it is an audible thing and you're with a group of people, you say, excuse me, in a little quiet voice. But they don't know those social cues and amores as to how to behave. But they're, being, they're, they're trying their best with what they know on how to handle it. But they'll be ostracized and judged based upon that social awkwardness. So it, I... Being a computer engineer, I see these patterns of vulnerable children being left with technology. Absolutely, Stevie G. And, and this is why I, I, I am here, that I am trying to speak to this. Ryan? Yes, sir. Um, Ace Raps Special Needs, that's who was asking you, and she's saying, or he's saying, mine has autism and sensory issues and bipolar. What does it take for me to help mine. Wow. He's got sensory processing issues. He's autism and he's bipolar. Yeah, I get, I, there are two of them, I think she said. Oh, this sounds like Char, um, Charlene. Sounds like Charlene. No, that's I, not Charlene. I don't Maybe know. I mean, the, 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 hand, the uh, Twitter name is Ace Raps SP Needs. Okay. That, okay. That, that does, that's okay. So I would say... Um, I am not a clinician. I am not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist, and I'm not a therapist. I am married to one. I'm married to the psychologist that deals in the community of special needs. 
So I would not be dispensing any therapeutic advice. It's merely anecdotal that I have research behind me that supports my anecdotal comments. But if you have a house filled with um, various issues, first of all, you do have support services available to you. To, if they're under 18 and you're in the U.S., you have support services that are available and afforded to you without you having to go into your insurance policy or having for you to reach into your pocket. So if you need help with those things and finding out what those resources and those services are to help you as a parent, you reach out to me. There's um, a woman that works with me who is part of my part of the parent owned family. Her name is Lori Reed, that she is an advocate for parents in various areas that she specializes with children that act out violently towards parents, but she's so familiar with the, the systems and the processes that she can be an advocate for you to help you find the resources that you need based upon where you are. She helps you advocate for your child in the school. She helps you advocate with the system to get the services that are afforded to you. If you have clinical diagnoses on your children, those services are available. So I hope that answers your question. I, I can't speak with authority on this, but I have the, the resources to the people that can. I hope that helps. Um, so, and that's the, inside my curriculum, in, inside here, I deal with some of those things. Yes, Becca just made a good point that pediatricians can help as well. They can't help as well. They can help with, with some of the pharmacological pieces the psychological and therapeutic goes into a different domain, but this absolutely the pediatricians can get you resources for some of that. Um, I'm not suggesting you go to the doctor and pay another bill to, to, to get some of that. There are some sources out there for you already. But in my platform, I deal with a lot of this as it relates to the benefits of kids using certain aspects of an internet connection. Again, this does not, this, this falls into my trifecta. Awareness, oversight, and controls. If I have children that are in the LD or in the, the, the learning environment, awareness is to, you aware of what they are, so we don't want them to get in, in touch with certain environments. So that's an awareness thing. I don't want them going there. I do want them to go into games like Minecraft and or Besiege, but I'm going to control how they do that. And I'm also going to have them, I'm going to limit what they can see on other areas on the internet because it's not appropriate for where they are. As they develop and as they develop skills and coping and tools and resources, that may become available to them. But all children, our school system chunks kids along based upon chronology. So that's awesome, Stevie G. That, that is what Laurie specializes in. And there's another, there was a child in here that was, yes, absolutely. They give them the tools that the anger, anger, the, the therapists and the support community. Well, this is great. So I, I apparently have um, uh, several people that have children with various learning challenges. And um, I don't want to tap dance around the words because I don't put any judgment on those children. I love them all. They all are little angels in my mind and they have these challenges. So that's part of the community that I serve. It's part of this educational platform to deal with those. And that's why I, I don't want me, my integrity is, my walk is my walk. You need to hear what other people say about me. People need to, you need to hear what they say about what I'm doing and how I'm affecting them. So um, I went over a, a couple of different areas and I, I'm going to go back to one other point before I close out. When I am having this conversation, it is absent of judgment. Please understand that. That any judgment that you are applying to what, what that is being applied based upon my words is your internal critic. And I ask that whenever you tune in to me, that you take that inner critic and you evict them for the time that you're connected to me as a com in the conversation. Absolutely, Stevie G. Saying technologist, technology can be your greatest or weakest threat or enemy or advocate. So evict the inner critic. Um, and Brian. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. You have about 14 people on Blab. Okay. Um, 
it's it's been an hour. Yep. Let's close the show, and then you, my you, you can turn on your uh, blab, and help them too, unless I, you unless you need to go. No, I'll I'll, I'll go back to blab. Okay, that's, so, that's fine. So let's. So right. I need you to close the show so I don't go on echo on. Right. So I can exit out the show. Right. You can you can exit the show. Okay. And people, you stay where you are, and Ryan will be right back with you. That's that's good. Thank you, Amnon. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brook, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Parent Dome with Ryan Miller, Current Affairs with Omnon Nissan. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.